Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm hoping I'm unmuted. Uh, welcome. Uh, it is a snow day here in our neck of the woods. So Lila is home today and Colin is home today. Colin just got done shoveling the driveway because dad's away at jury duty. So he got to do the job by himself. And um, Lila is making a card for her friend over here. So if you hear noises, it might be Colin on the Peloton upstairs or Lila crafting. So welcome everyone. I wonder if any of you all, or yeah, if any of you all have a snow day too. Because it's a snow day, I have my pajamas on. You know, I'm not going anywhere. So I took a shower, got ready and put on fresh jammies. So these are my little doggy jammies. So welcome everyone. I hope some of you are able to be in your jammies today too and uh, staying warm. So I have uh, a lot to, yes, it is a snow day here today. You know, we didn't get that much. How many inches do you think? Maybe three or four. Three or four. But we tend to call school off pretty easily. So this is actually our first school snow day of the year, but they had a four day weekend last weekend and now it's a three day weekend this weekend. So I'm wondering if they're ever going to go back to school. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I have a lot planned for today. I am not sure if I'll get through it all because I was a little ambitious. I did prep some things ahead of time to make hopefully three different cards in this time using the same product. However, if we only get to do, we only get to two. Um, I have some fun things to share. It was just a product that I was really wanting to use and I thought could be used in so many different ways. I thought I'd share it in a live. Um, if you can refresh the page, you'll see in the description below, I've added the supplies that I'm using. So if you have questions during this, you'll, you can go there to see the supplies that I'm using. Also, um, Altenu, I told them I was going to be going live with some of their products today, and they offered a free gift for my viewers. And the information about that is in the description now. So if you hit refresh, you should be able to see all of it in the, uh, in the description. So um, what it is, is I'm using some products from their newest release, the January release that came out a few weeks ago. And they said, if you spend $79 or more on that new release, you get a free little zipper bag, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment. Uh, but keep in mind, Altenew also has lots of products on sale right now, so I put a link below to all of their sale stuff also. I know they have a big sale on their double-sided tape right now too. So anyway, I was just excited to go live with this product, and when I told May over at Altenew, they said uh, we could do this free gift. So. I think I will first just briefly show you the bag and a few things, and then we're going to dive into making some cards. Let me get the bag here. So I'm going to switch to overhead here if it works. Yay, it does. Okay. So this is the bag that you get, not with the stuff in it, of course, but the bag that you get um, free with $79 purchase. So it's one of those very durable, it looks like it's got holes, but it's actually solid and it's very durable and it zips nicely and it's great for storing all of your uh, products you know, as you're working on them. What I like to do when I get some new things that to, in that I wanna to use together, I'll put them in a zipper bag like this. I also uh, have been known to do a bunch of die cutting and gluing on the go and I like to use these kind of bags. And I just really liked how it's got this nice top to it. And it comes in other colors also, there's like a um, this is the blue. There's also like a mint and a yellow and I think a white maybe. Um, the blue one is the one that they're doing for free right now with all that information in the description. So their January release, which is what um, that you can purchase from to get that free bag, has a lot of good stuff in it. I'm going to be using two of the things today, but I encourage you to look at it because look at this. This is really cool. I'm not using it, but it makes this like layered flower like that. Isn't that cool with all these intricate dyes? So there's a little bit of everything in here um, from dyes to beautiful layering stencils for a rose. Um, this one is really pretty. Let me show you this one. I have a link to this whole release below. Um, so you can see how beautiful and unique that is. So there's a lot of good things in this release. It's all linked below, but I will be focusing on two two or three of the products from it today. So I'm going to set these things aside in my little bag here. 
And I, as I'm going, I will try my best to answer questions. I'm a little distracted today with all that's going on, but I will do my best. Okay, so what I'm going to really focus mostly on today is the zero waste field of flowers. Now this includes, um, there is a stenciling set and there is a die, and they're sold together or separately. I will be using them together today, but it creates this really beautiful um, floral background, but then the die, you can line up with it and cut all of those individual flowers and then arrange them however you want. So you could do a little bouquet, you could do a wreath. I'm going to be doing a few variations today. Some of them, on two of my cards, we're gonna keep it connected but use the die, and on the other one, we're gonna use the die to cut the little images apart. So, this is really what I'm focusing on. This is what I saw that I just, I had to use. So let's get started by just using it in a basic way, but then I'm gonna show you how to step it up. I do wanna say, be sure to stay tuned for later in the video, or come back later if you can't, because I'm gonna show how to do this, and I think that is really, if this one's not complete, but I'm gonna show you how to do that bright color on the black, and I think it's really neat. But we're gonna start with the basic first, so stick around for that. Okay, so I just have a piece of cardstock here. Now you could really line up these stencils in so many different ways. You can use a smaller piece of cardstock and then um, use like a sticky mat behind it. Today I'm just using some tape. So I'm starting with stencil number one. Let me see if I can get this to show. If you look closely, Altenew's got the number of the stencil and you really don't have to go in the order of the number, but I will today. And then see how they have the etchings of the other images so that it'll be easy to line up with what you've done before. So let me start with the first stencil and you can put it really anywhere on your paper that you want to. Oops. I don't know where that other piece went. It's probably gonna be stuck to me here. Okay, so I've just got this taped temporarily in place and I'm just gonna do some inking on top. Now you could use absolutely whatever, um, whatever kind of inks you want over this and whatever inking tools. I'm gonna use some fresh dye inks. This is actually one of the newest, newest color families. This is in that January release, so that's in included in the offer. But this color family, I think, is really pretty. So I thought I would do uh, a few of these. So I think I'll do, let's go lighter. I'm going to go with the two lighter, the aloe vera and the tea, but we'll see. I might pull in a little bit more. This is an ink stand, which is a really helpful tool. comes in different shapes for different ink pads. I am using the one for the um, Altenew Fresh Dye Inks, which is round. This is the aloe vera color, and I'm going to, you could just go green over this whole thing and make the whole thing uh, green, or you could um, you know, kind of just do an ombre look to get some variation. But what I'm doing here is like a little, um, little bit of selective inking, but I'm not being really careful. I'm not taking the time to mask here because if you think about it, I wanna go a little darker actually. If you think about it, Every, I'm going to do various shades of green on this, so if a little bit of green gets in one of the other leaves, that's okay. We'll just go on top of it. So if you can, if you see, if you look closely, while I was over here picking out some markers to use to color, <laughs> um, if you look closely, I am going dark on one tip of each leaf and kind of blending out to white. That way you get a little bit of variation, but you're only using one ink. You know, it's just... You could do two different inks. You could do like a yellow at one end or a little bit of blue at one end to get that uh, variation of color. But I'm really just kind of blending out to almost white. It's just got a little bit of ink on the tip. So I'll do just this one style of leaf with this color. I really like this color, this uh, family of inks. So Altenew has this is their ink line now. They had crisp dye inks and they're still selling them right now and they'll still have the reinkers available, but they're really kind of switching all the colors to the um, fresh dye inks, this round ink pad. I really like these inks. The formulation is a little bit, it seems like a little bit, um, it's more viscous, a little bit thicker. So I find that it really inks up stamps very nicely. And I also find that it blends nicely, but really you could use absolutely any 
color of inks that you, um, or any type of inks that you want to here. Yes, I think, it, Brian, did I see you there? Brian is the, um, in the comments, and she's the creator of, of the um, ink stand. It's, it's one of those tools you don't realize you desperately need until you have it. So, okay, so now I'm gonna do some of the others. This is another, two from another color family. There are two darker shades. I'm gonna go with these lighter ones. And these I'll do in the other. Now notice I didn't clean my brush. I'm, you know, I have one brush for green, you know, one for blue. That, so I just stuck with my green and it kind of just blends out just fine. Right. This is the Zero Waste Field Flowers. Now the reason it's called Zero Waste is when you cut it out, which you'll see in a little bit, when you cut it out with the dye, you can use the negative space and all of the little leaves. So there's nothing going to waste. And I will be, hopefully, if I don't run out of time, you can see I'm hurrying because I want to share so much, um, that you, I, I'll be able to demonstrate how it's zero waste. But this is the zero waste field of flowers. Um, they, there is a layering stencil set and a die that go together and they're sold together or separately. And now they've had other zero waste dyes in the past, but I think this is the one of the first times they've had a stencil go with it too. So this will allow you to stencil a bunch of flowers and then cut them out. Oh, Amy Tangerine is here. Hi, Amy. I haven't seen you in so long. Just not right. Okay. Now, I'm for the rest of it, I think I'll do the oak moss, which is a bit darker. It might be a little too dark, but what the heck. So I'm going to put that over the remaining. So by using a small blending brush, I can easily get into these different areas without having to mask anything off. But you could always use like a piece of acetate or something to mask, or you could um, use a post-it note. But I find if you have a small enough blending brush, you'll be just fine. Um, this is the mini ink blending brush from Altenew. You can see mine is very loved. I mean, completely changed green to, uh, completely changed to green. I do have, um, a few other sizes that I like to use, but when I'm working in small spaces, this is a great size. So if you really want to do selective coloring over a stencil like I'm doing right here, this is a great size. All right. So somebody said the zero, yes, the zero waste items. I agree with you, Lori. The zero waste items for Altenew are awesome. And I'm so hoping they keep coming out with, with more and more of them uh, because I, I just feel that um, it's a great way to, I mean, Yes, you're not wasting as much, but you're actually getting two for one as you go, which you'll see. By the way, these twist on, so if you drop them like I do all the time, the lid won't go flying off. Okay, so I, that is the first stencil, and that's all of the leaves. So now what I'll do here is take my tape off, stick it on my ink, ink stand so I can reuse them, and then I have a spray bottle. I got a smaller bottle because the bigger one was just getting in the way of everything but this just has rubbing alcohol in it and you give a few spritzes i usually do one or two with the rubbing alcohol and then with the dry cloth you can remove all of that ink and that is much faster than running to the sink now if you used a gel or a paste you would definitely definitely want to um, go run that under the uh in the sink with some soapy water but for just inks rubbing alcohol is the way to go so easy and then, then it's not wet. You don't have to worry about waiting for it to dry. Okay, so that was stencil number one. Let's see, stencil number two. Now notice, if you can see here, um, can you see there? See how there's etched lines in the shape of the leaves? So I can line up those etched lines with the leaves I've already done. So I can look through, you, pro you probably can't see it in the video, but I'm looking how the etch lines line up with the leaves I've already inked. And I really like look in three spots and make sure the three spots line up. And if they line up there, then I know everything's lined up. So I'll tape that in place. And so that makes it really easy to line it up and make sure that everything is um, gonna layer together nicely. All right, now this time, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. There is, I'll need some advice here. You have to tell me. There, these are two of the new color families from um, Altenew that are in this January release. This is one of my favorite color families of all time. 
In their older crisp dye ink, this is one of my most used sets. So you have the light, medium, dark, and extra dark. And then there's this mauve collection. Now, should I do my flowers in mauves, in blues, or a mix? So you tell me. I'm going to watch in the comments. Tell me if I should do the mauves, the blues, or the mix. Funny, I've been to three weddings this year, and every wedding the color was mauve that must be like the popular one right now so i'll watch the comments here mike let me know if any questions pop up yeah. okay so mix mix ma oh gosh what's everybody saying here mike mix mix okay mix mix we can make a mix how about that uh let's do berry licious let's try these to start but we might do more who knows I'm winging it here. And if you know me, I don't wing things. I don't, I don't. I was, Kathy was like, I was just talking to Kathy Zilski before this and I said, I have some things planned. And she's like, that's half the battle. And I'm like, well, kind of planned, kind of. Okay, so let's think here. I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go kind of random. Ooh, I like that color, that's pretty. So I'm gonna do some of this Berry Licious and I'm kind of going toward, darker towards the center of the flower and lighter towards the tip. That is definitely not something you have to do, but I feel like it gives that little bit of variation or the look of depth or dimension. You can come in with a smaller blending brush to do more of that, but you know, I have some people watching and things get harder when people are watching. So that's the way it goes. So I'm just doing some of these little happy, I call these happy flowers where like they're nice and rounded petals, little happy flowers. I'm doing a bunch of these in this very licious color. I think that might be good. No, nope. uh, let's do this one too. All right, so there's some very licious. I'm gonna probably come back and do more. Well, no, let's switch to, see, this is how I am. This is how I am. I gotta change my mind a million times. Okay, I'm gonna come in with the mauve, which is a bit different here. I'm gonna go light with this over some of these little guys here. Mike, are there any questions? Because I don't wanna really miss anything. Um, here. What's that? Oh, oh, look how fancy Mike got. Look at that. Yeah, I can make it bigger. What's it say? Uh, will gonna... alcohol eventually dry the stencil out, causing it to crack? I, you know, I don't think so. That's something I need to ask my husband because he's a chemical engineer. He would know the answer to that. But again, he's in jury duty sitting and waiting and doing nothing for the second week. And uh, he, so I can't ask him. But you know what? I'll ask him and I'll let you know in a future video. But I'm not doing it that often. And it's just a little bit. And I highly, highly doubt it. Highly doubt it. Okay. So I did some of the pinks. But I'm going to switch to blue. So I am going to take this off and clean it. So I don't have to worry about staying in one spot too much. I'm terrible from, from comments. Talk about your fingernails. Oh, I gotta talk about my fingernails again. Mm -hmm. uh, my nails, they are um, Impress manicures. They are press on nails. They're little stickers that you stick on and they stay put. And I love them because I don't have the chemicals of painting nails and I have weak nails and it works great for me. And I can add a uh, some information about that later. I have it on my last video if you want to check out a link to, to them and how there's like a deal like for your first purchase, you save some money. I don't know, but it's impressed manicures. All right, let's do some blue now. All right, let's, let's see it. I want to do Caribbean sky. I think that's the color. Yeah, I like that. All right, so let's do some of the flowers. Now, if I wanted to, I could come in with a detail brush like this one and add some darker towards the center. But again, I'm gonna not do that today and just do a little, you know, a little bit here and there of kind of variation of color. All right. One thing I do recommend whenever inking, especially over a tiny area, is to wax on, wax off. If you, if you know that expression where you do like a, in both directions. You kind of swirl in one way, swirl in the other way, and that will kind of get that color into the nooks and crannies a bit better and you get more coverage. All right. Somebody said, okay, hold on. Mary said, as a retired lab rat, we store alcohol in plastic containers for a year. It should not dry out your stencils. See, 
Ken can stay at, at jury duty. I think my husband was the first person in the whole world, maybe, who wanted to be called. He's retired. He felt like it was civic duty. So he was actually like ready. And every day, at the end of the day, he'd call me and he's like, I wasn't called back. And he was quite bummed about it. So I think he might be the first person to really, really, really want to do it. I mean, he, he didn't want to get one of those cases that'd be hard to listen to, but he, you know, something minor, who knows? Okay. So now I've done variation of those two colors over the background. So we have some blues, some greens, and some mauves. All right. So let's give this a quick cleaning. Do you want to say hi? Hold on. I got to switch you. There's Lila. Say hi. Hi. Who are, you, are you making cards for your friends? Yeah. Birthday cards? Yep. The apple doesn't fall very far from the tree, right? Yeah, well, one of her friends gets to come over after this. We have a great hill for sledding in our backyard, so she's very excited about that. Okay, let's go to stencil number three. And again, it has the etching on it, like I showed you before. Uh, oh, yeah, hey, I match my, hey, I match my, somebody said I match yeah. my dress, or my uh, pajamas, not my dress. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Lila's even dressed, and I'm in my pajamas. See, the best part about my pajamas all is I put them on, and I'm like, I let the dogs out, and I'm like, and it, cold air came in the house, and I'm like, man, my leg's cold. Turns out I have this giant hole in the, the leg of my pajama pants, but I'm still wearing them. We're classy around here. Okay, over these, let's go really dark for the center of the flower. So this will do little berries in the background and also the center of the flowers. So I'm going to go super dark with the same color of what I put below. So this was like the mauve color family. I used one of the medium shades. Now I'm going in with the darkest on top. All right. Anybody got questions out there? I'm kind of blabbing today. I was really nervous today. I was getting less nervous, but today I got very nervous. So I don't know. It's just the way it goes. Got any? Nope. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna put this down and then I gotta decide what colors to do all the berries. I'm doing some of them blue, but I'm not sure what I wanna do after that. I wanna see your card when you're done with your Lila. Oh, I think she's, uh, some folks asked to see Lila's card when she's Lila. done. She's faster than me. Um, she is doing some mama elephant right now because um, one of her best friends really likes uh, pandas and they have some cute little pandas. She also, I don't know if you all saw a few weeks ago, you got to check it out. I didn't see the video, but I saw the final results. Gina did a live on using, um, using, um, shaving cream and reinkers to make marble backgrounds. Well, that is Lila's jam. I bet she's made hundreds of those. In fact, we filmed a video a long time ago, but I never got to sharing it. There's a stack of them back there somewhere. Lila, I'll have to bring them over here. She still wants to do a, share a video sometime. I just haven't gotten around to it. In the meantime, you can watch, um, watch Gina's. Okay, now, here we go. I'm gonna line this back up. Cause did you notice I only did some of the little whole, oh, uh, little berries in the background? Cause I wanted to look and see what I needed more of. I think I need more of the light pink. So I'm gonna line it back up and do the rest in light pink. Okay, you wanna show your, while I do that in light, you wanna show them what you got? Look at all of her. <laughs> so you know how I go crazy creating? Little Missy here does too. So all of those she made using that marbling of reinkers, and I believe those were all Gina K reinkers. There might have been some Simon Says Stamp in there too, but yeah, she's got all those ready, and every once in a while she'll throw on a sentiment and have a card. So that's one of her favorite favorite techniques, so I was glad to see Gina did that. Aunt Gina did that, didn't she? Yeah. I gotta let you watch that. But you did these, you've had these for a long time, and every once in a while, like if a teacher needs a card, she reaches in and grabs those, but it's a great way to use your reinkers. So, yeah, I, I too like to make a lot of things at once. And uh, apparently she's my mini me. All right, let's see here, what do we got? 
I did light, I did the lightest, which is the pink crystal, which gives, which is neat because I like how it's a little bit, I have a little bit of a pinkish blue, which kind of ties everything together. So there we got our background going. Really unique color family. And I think that's one of the fun things about just trying different, trying new color combinations instead of always reaching for the same thing. Okay, last stencil for this one. And this one is what pulls it all together. Again, I'm lying, you can kind of see the etches on this better because it's kind of dirty. I didn't clean it great. I'm gonna line that up. She is my mini you. She is my mini me, yes. And my son is Collins, or is uh, Ken's, a little version of Ken. It's, it's pretty, pretty uh, intense how much they are like. Okay, but that's a good thing because I, I like my husband, so I like my kid. All right, hi Joy. Can you do the shaving cream technique with anything else? You don't have reinforced. Um, you know, you can do food coloring. what? Food coloring. Food coloring. That's Lila's tip. You could do food coloring. You can do alcohol inks. I don't think the results are the same. You can do like say you have a like a dist distress stain spray that. Um, you could do drops of that. Now, the thing is with the nice thing about reinkers or even food coloring is that it's such intense color that you don't need much of it to make a great impact or to make a, a you know, a big impact of color. So you can definitely try those. Um, but you know, I know a lot of people invest in reinkers and you want to find more ways to use them and get a little more bang for your buck, you know, besides just reinking your ink pads. Um, I know these fresh dyeing reinkers work great for that technique. I know we've used that before too. So, um, yeah, really almost any, I know distress ink reinkers work great. Um, yeah. All right. You know, I would ask Mike for a question, but he disappeared. He left me hanging. I don't know where he went. It's funny because you feel like you're talking to yourself. Okay, so now over this, oh, I, I hear him. He's in the snack bin out there. He's getting pretzels. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there we go. Look at that. That's the oak moss, which is the darkest, and that added the stems. Here, let me switch to the side so you can see a little bit better. And look how pretty that is. So this could be a beautiful background just as is. You know, you could do a bunch of different color combinations. Uh, Lila said, Question, what is the stencil that I'm using? This is the zero, um, the zero waste field of flowers. It's linked in the description below. If you open my the YouTube description, you'll see all of the supplies I'm using are there. Hi, Ricky. My friend Ricky's here. Do I still use the same storage for stencil that I had in a video years ago? Yes, I well, these are stencil pockets. I believe these are from Gina K Designs. And I use a darker piece of cardstock instead of white in there so that when your stencil's in there, you can better see what the pattern is. Um, so this is actually Gina K Tropical Teal in a Gina K pocket. So, but yeah, pretty much the same as I did before. Now I did, let me just show you, I did white on this, but here is one where I did blues and greens over blue cardstock. So don't think that you have to start with white cardstock. This is just another example I did some of the same colors, some of those same blues and greens, but on a mint piece of cardstock. Okay. Yes, wouldn't it be nice to have a blanket that looked like this? All right, now, I could now easily, with the zero waste part of this, let's save that cardstock. Uh, the zero waste part of this is that the die will line up and cut these out wonderfully. And watch, see how it lines right up? You can see through the holes and line it up and run it through your die cut machine. And that'll give you tons of little die cuts that are inked beautifully, right? And you can make wreaths, bouquets. Altenew has tons of different, um, different uh, examples over on their website. Uh, but I thought I'd show you a variation with this first example. So let me get my die cut machine. Oh, I'm sore from Pilates. Okay, got my die cut machine here. Now you could use any die cut machine you might, can you refill this with this? I'm running out on it. Um, you could use any die cut machine for this that, that you have the flexible mat for. 
So any, almost every machine comes with or has available a flexible embossing mat. And this allows you to make an impression with the die. So I thought it'd be fun to make an impression with this die around the inking we just did and pray that it works. So we're gonna do a little praying here. Join me in uh, hoping that this works live. Now, when I make an impression with the die, I do like to, uh oh, uh -huh, there it is. I do like to mist the water or mist my cardstock with a little bit of water just to um, kind of soften the paper and allow for deeper imp impression, but I don't want to mist my ink. So what I'm going to do is mist the back of it. So I'm going to do kind of um, kind of like a light, like you would spray perfume, like you kind of kind of wave it through the mist, just a little mist of um, water on the back of it. You could skip that if you want to, by the way. All right. Oh, somebody said you can use, um, somebody said you could, liquid watercolors. So there you go, you can use liquid watercolors. So now I have my die cut machine in the sandwich that it recommends for making an impression with the die. And your die cut machine should say in the uh, instruction manual what sandwich to use. Uh, the Spellbinders one has it right here on the platform. So this is the sandwich I'm using. It's the platform, the B plate, then this flexible mat. And this flexible mat is what allows you to make an impression instead of cutting with a die. So I'll lay my cardstock on here and then get this set up just right over it, lining it up. I think I'm going to tape it because I don't want to mess it up at this point. Oh, Beth, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, so let's put a little tape on here just to be sure. So again, my paper, my inked piece is on, a, on the flexible embossing mat. Then I'll put the top plate on top and this will make an impression with that die instead of cutting with it. And we'll hope it, hope it works. It should work. Okay. So let's take this out the other side and look at that. Ooh, so now all of those little inked areas look like they're on pillows. Isn't that fun? Oh, Mike likes it, so that's good. All right, so that was just another way you could use these stencils and dies together. And again, I will show you cutting it up later on, but for this first example, I wanted to show this. Okay. All right, so now we have this background. And you can see we made an impression with the dye over the stenciling we did with the zero waste field of flowers. So I can trim this down. Let's see. I'm trying to think if, if I want to cover the entire card front. I don't know. Let's trim it down and see. Let's do, no, I'm gonna not. And I can save these pieces for another. And here we have our background. Isn't that fun? I love that. It's just that any time you have stencils with a die that coordinates or stamps with a die that coordinates, you could stamp like a large floral image, then use the die to make an impression and keep it like a one layer card. It just has texture to it. All right, so I don't know. I think I might need to put that on a colored note card. What do you think? Should that go on white or colored? I don't have any colored ready here because I was not prepared for that. Hmm. Oh, I know what I can do. Better yet, since I was not prepared, let's take a piece of scrap paper here. Can you do the same technique on the Impress? Yes, you can. You can do this on the Impress because the Impress does come with a flexible mat so you can do the same thing. So I have a note card here and I want to have, a, I think a blue, no, yeah, I think a blue mat for this that matches. So the best way to make sure it mat, uh, matches is to go direct with the ink pad around the edges. So I have a white note card here and I'm just gonna drag my ink pad around the edges. This is super juicy because it's a brand new ink pad. Look at that color. Mm -hmm. I love that color. Uh, Sean, thank you very much. I very much appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. It makes me happy that you're all here. Oh, look at that. 
Now look at how that matches. Boom. I love that. So much better than digging and finding the perfect color of cardstock. Oh, Altenew is here. Hi, Altenew. I wonder who it is. Who is it from Altenew there? Is it May? Or is it Bridget? I never know. Hopefully they'll toss. Okay, so I'm going to put this on with some liquid adhesive, and then I'll put something heavy on it while it dries. Got my Share Handmade Kindness block. All right, and then sentiment. Now, I may glue my sentiment on a little bit later. I'm not sure, because I want to save some time so I can show more. Yeah, I might need to. But I, here are some of the sentiments that I've prepped in kind of preparing for this. I have some different variations here. The the ink color? Here's the ink. What's the name of the color? I think if, if that's what they're asking for. So I've got all of these little sentiments that I pre-prepared, and I will have to figure out what I want to use. I'll probably figure this out either at the end or do it and share it on my blog later because I want to save time. But I plan to just put a sentiment on here and let a lot of that background show. Let me show you what these sentiments are from. So I have a few different ones here. I have thanks and hello. I did all these ahead of time because I knew I would put them to use. So these here are stamped ones. These stamped ones are from this, I love this set. This is the Daisy Crown. It has these big Daisy images, but it also has these great sentiments and smaller ones. And that's what all of these are from. This is in the January release too. There are dies for the sentiments, so they're easy to cut out. I'm not using the floral image, but you can kind of see the look that you can get, the kind of cards you can get. And then there's layering stencils that you can use to color in the flowers. So it's nice when you have all the different pieces uh, so that you can mix and match them. So there's stencils in there also, but I used just the stamps and I did a variation of ones. I think I'll probably do friend sending smiles. Now this friend and this hello, this is from an older project or an older product. I'll get that out here. The friend hello and hugs is from this timeless sentiments, which I've used many, many times in videos. I really like the style of it. I just feel like it can be used with a variety of styles of cards and the same with the sentiments that are from the Daisy Crown. So these bigger ones that are die cut is from Timeless Sentiments and the stamped ones over here are from Daisy Crown. So I think, I think I'm gonna add the sentiments later because I wanna make sure I show you some more techniques with this set. Cindy Lynn, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Um, but this is, this Daisy Crown is in that January release. So if you just joined and you're wondering what I'm using here, I have everything linked in my YouTube description below. At the top it says there's a visual supply list. If you click that or copy and paste that into a new window, it'll show all these thumbnails of what I'm using so it makes it easier to find if you want to see more examples using those products or uh, take a look at it. Um, also, in the description is information from Altenew on if you spend $79 from their new release, uh, which is most of what I'm using today, then you get a free um, zipper bag, which I showed at the beginning of this video. I'll show it again at the end. So be sure to check that out if you happen to be shopping. They also have a lot of great sales going on. Hi, Richard. Okay, so here's our first one where you get this like look of pillow around it by making an impression with the die. All right, so that's the first technique. I think I'm gonna go ahead to this one. Now I used the same products. Let me get them all out here. I used the same products, uh, but this time I wanted gold color on black cardstock. Now this is incomplete. I haven't used all the stencils. I saved one to share with you. But let me show you or talk a little bit more about inking over stencils on dark cardstock. If you want bright color, on dark cardstock, your best options are to first put the stencil down, put the stencil down with this, and put um, a white pigment ink over it and dry that. Then put um, a, another type of pigment ink or distress oxide. Distress, distress oxide has a little pigment property to it. And when you put it on dark colors of cardstock, you see the color more. 
if I went with like this blue here and put it on, you wouldn't see the blue color, right? But if you use Distress Oxide, you would see the blue a bit more. If you put white pigment ink underneath it, you'd see it even more. However, I was really excited because I thought of a way to use stencils over dark cardstock and get really bright results. And that's what um, I have already done here. So I used acrylic markers. Now I know there's acrylic markers out there. I got these and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them until I used them on black cardstock and I was very, very excited. Let me get a sample of cardstock here. Oh. oh, Amy and Terry, thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. Maybe we'll go buy some hot chocolate after this when we go pick up her friend. Lila liked the sound of that. Okay, so these are acrylic markers. Now I know there you probably have used acrylic markers in the past. I was really impressed with these because they really go on like butter and they don't have much streaking or color show through. So let me show you. You've got the tip like most acrylic markers are, but I find it's a little bit finer. You can do a little more fine line than most, but look at this. Look how bright that color goes down. And this is on black cardstock. So you can, uh, let's see what color I want to do. Let's do green. So you can get really vibrant colors. Now, what I also noticed is if you want it to be even more vibrant, you can go over it for a second layer, but really the first layer does a great job. So what I decided to do was color in my stencils with these so that I could get a bright color, true bright color with the black all around it. There are other techniques that you can do to get kind of similar bright color with dark around, black around it, but it takes more effort and this is just so fast. Look at how that goes down. So you can do little dots and for that infamous white dot marker, your white, you know, white dot question, everybody's always asking, what's the white, best white gel pen? I'm thinking this acrylic pen, or this would be good. So in the set, there are 24 colors. Uh, I used a variety of them to create this background, and the white, I definitely will be using a lot. So I'm gonna keep the white out so that I can have that next to my desk at all times. So anytime I wanna do white dots or fix some stamping where I colored maybe outside of the line, I'll have that white paint pen. So these are acrylic markers. These are from Altenew also. I think they're quite affordable considering the quality uh, of them. And this is included in that January release, which is part of that free gift deal that's in the description. So I'm really excited about these. They do also have, I can't find mine, but they do also have um, paint by number cards. They're, they're like, what we did as a kid and you use the acrylic pens to color over it and you end up with a beautiful painted panel and it's really cool. So, um, you know, there are other paints out there that are very opaque that allow you to get this bright color on the dark, but I really like the control of this and I'm not good with a paintbrush. So these are acrylic markers from Altenew. They're linked in the description below. There's 24 colors in here. My guess is there'll be more, and the only reason I say that is because it says volume one. So that's my detective skills there. Um, but I just, I think it, it's so much fun to use. Okay, so what I have done here, I wanted to save some time. Um, you, I'm, I'm guessing you can use any acrylic markers. I don't have any others, so this is what I used, and I liked the colors of them. Um, when I've used them in the past, I remember they were all like bright primary colors, but you know, try what you have for sure. But I, I was, I've been really happy with these. Okay, so what I had done here is, um, doo -doo -doo. how do they work on white? How do they work? Oh, they work. I'll show you. How do they work on white? That's a great question. While I try to find my other stencil, they work great on white. Same thing. Do they dry quickly? Yeah, they dry very quickly. I mean, it's not instant, but you can see, I can see the shine going away. So. Um, pretty quick. When I was doing this stencil, oh, here it is. When I was doing this stenciling um, before, when I did these layers, I would just quickly heat set it between. But here, I just did that, and you can see it's not, it's dry. Come off stencils, you mean? The stencils, I yes, I used them over the stencils, 
and I used rubbing alcohol and it came off. So I used these stencils before. So let me show you what I've done already. And then I'm gonna do, the, I've done three of the stencils and I'll do the fourth to show you how I did it. But what I did is I started with stencil number one. I gotta get it lined up with what I had. So I did like this and I did two different shades of the green and I traced in the openings. Then I went to stencil number two and traced in the openings with purple and pink paint pens. To clean the stencils, I use uh, rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle and just a dry cloth. Then I lined up the, this stencil and I colored in with the turquoise, with that dark turquoise. And now we're on to the third one here, or the fourth one. I think I did them out of order, but I'm here with the last one. I'm lining up the etching on it with what we already have. And I'm gonna demonstrate how I did all of those layers. I did that coloring off screen because I knew it was gonna take a while to do on screen. And I wanna be able to show you a few things. The acrylic markers, the, the white, can the white be purchased alone? I'm not sure. I don't think so. I don't think I saw that but maybe that's something they're considering in the future. Yeah, okay. So I've lined up the final stencil and I'm gonna demonstrate what I did with it. And I think I'll do, I think I'm gonna do, um, I think I might do the white. Maybe do some yellow too. Let's do white and yellow. Oh, by the way, I love this, that it locks in. So when you open it, they don't come falling out. So smart. Okay, so what I'll do here, move that out of the way, is I am just tracing in this the openings. Now you don't want to be like really firm because you don't want to damage the tip, but I found that these are very durable. I don't have any problems with it. Uh, I didn't have any problems, but I kind of go around keeping it kind of upright and just color in the area. So for these others, I'll demonstrate with those two. You just go right up to the edge and just gently kind of go around. And I'm putting yellow on the center of the flowers. Then, yeah, these are like paint markers. I, I mean, I, listen, I haven't used paint markers much in the past. Acrylic markers, I don't think I've used them since I was a kid. <clears throat> but I find that they do really well. And you can see how bright the color was that I put down. And you don't, I remember using paint pens, acrylic markers or whatever in the past, and you have to pump them. I didn't have to do that. These, I don't know. You know, here's the thing. I, I tend to reach for the products that crafty companies come out with because I feel like they do the research for me. You know, they find what blending brushes work the best what markers work the best, what types of inks, as opposed to me going out and trying to find, you know, other options in the market. So for me, I find that this is just, um, I know that from all to new, I'm going to get high quality and it works great for me. So you definitely, you always try what you got. If you've got something that you think might work, then give that a whirl. It's kind of like the, um, the marbling we were talking about earlier. If you don't have reinkers, try first with food coloring. See if that works. Does yeah. Transfer? Uh huh. Does the ink transfer to the marker? Like you're doing different colors on. Top uh, on top. I haven't noticed any. I'm gonna go and put a little bit more over top, just because I can. I'm doing yellow on top of the pink. I don't know if that's gonna show up much, but hey, you know. Yeah, Eric, I'm with you. I I want to try to support these companies, and I. You know, when blending brushes came out, to be honest with you, I tried finding like from makeup lines and stuff, different options, but I ended up spending more money trying to find one I like, ones I like than I did just buying the quality stuff from um, companies that I know and love. So hi, Simon. Good to see you. Okay, so I'm going to go in and do just a little more white. But I'm kind of going light on here because I want, I don't want these to be too distracting. All right, while I do these, Mike, tell me what we got here. Questions? Sure. All right, let's see. 
do the marker colors match their inks? You side? know what? I believe so because see on the side it says fresh lemon. They have a fresh lemon ink pad, so I'm guessing that it's the same. I noticed some of the, all of the other names are colors they have in those ink pad in their ink line too. So that's my guess. And I've just been playing with these this week. I've used them to, you can use them to color stamped images. Like you could stamp um, a floral and then color it in with these and color over the outline stamping. So you get that look of, you know, the no outline stamping without as much effort because I'm terrible at that no outline. You'll never see me do it. I don't think I've ever done it on a video because I'm not good at that kind of thing. Okay. So I did yellow and white over the opening. We'll peel it off and look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So now for cleaning this, let me move my project here. The tip, I, I see, I just looked up briefly and I saw questions about the tip. The tip, I, I haven't had to push it. I don't know if it says anything. It, I mean, I took it out. Like, for example, um, let's find a color I haven't used. I haven't used this brown. And you can see right away, it's ready to color. So there's no pumping it. No, it just, I, I've done a lot of coloring with these over the past few days while I was trying them out and I never had to pump them. Maybe if somebody from Altenew, oh, May's here. May, Miriam, one of you, May, May one of you Altenew folks, can you tell me, do you have to pump these? I don't think you do. I haven't had to. Go over the info about the free gift and what what stuff you have to buy okay. for it to count. Okay, I will. What um, first of all, somebody, I see somebody asked if there's a smell to these. I don't smell anything. I don't smell anything. I don't, I don't. I usually do and I don't. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, the free gift. Let me, as I'm talking about the free gift, I'm just going to demonstrate if you have a bigger opening, how I just trace how I color it in. Um, the free gift, the information is in the description below. It is, um, if you spend $79 on their January release, which these markers are in, these stencils and dies are in, you get a free um, little bag which I showed at the beginning of the video, but I will show it again here in a moment. And all that is in the description below. You got to use the code. Uh, and, oh, it's Nicole. Nicole is at Altenew. Um, she said, no, you do not need to pump the marker tips. So you saw there how I traced in. You can easily trace this in with no problem. I just go kind of go lightly along the edge and then color it in. I don't recommend it for super detail. You know, like, I think it's better for bigger openings uh, stencils but it worked great here as you can see and you can see there is some marker on there and it'll come right off with the spritz of alcohol so it comes off so that gives us that bright color isn't that fun and look how that white is I do not notice a smell at all and I <laughs> do you smell it come here Lila's here do you smell anything no smell, no. And I'm pretty sensitive, like I can't paint my nails, so I would notice if there was. I do. You do not have to prime these markers. You never have to pump the tip. They come out ready. Like I haven't used the black before, and I'll show you, the tip is ready to go. And Nicole from Altenew is here saying you do not need to um, ever pump it. I'm not gonna try it because I don't, you don't need to, so. Um, anyway, so these are the acrylic markers. They're in the description below. They're part of that deal. Um, and I think the price is very affordable, all the colors included. So there you can see how we got vibrant color. Isn't that fun? I think that's fun. All right, Lila wants to show you her card. Explain what it's for. Uh, this card is for one of her best friend's birthday. All right. Look at that. Look at that. <gasps> What'd you do here? What'd you do? Cardstock. Sparkly cardstock. She cut it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at that. That's like, I think it's, I don't know where that's from, but it's super glittery cardstock and she cut some out to put in the balloons. And these stamps were from Mama Elephant. All of them. So good. 
You're so sweet. I'm going to make another one for my love trunk. Yeah, her two best friends have the birthday on the same day. Well done, Lila. Thank you. She should do lives, right? Aw, Amy said yours is Amy said yours is cute. Thank you. Okay. Um, any more questions about these? They're linked below if you want to get a better description about them. I, I don't notice any smell with them. Um, and you don't have to pump them or prime them, and they just are really vibrant on the black cardstock. And I will be using them more in videos, especially for like adding little dots. So say you want to add little dots, um, little accents on a colored background. Instead of gemstones, you could do little dots of color. Uh, Diana, hi Diana. Diana asked something. Where'd it go? Hold on. Yes, your the seventy-nine dollars I believe has to be from the new release. But the new release includes the inks I've been using. It includes um, the markers. It includes this stamp set where I use the sentiments, and it also includes the stencil and die, the field of flowers I'm using today. So there you go. Okay, and there is a button, or there is in the a link in the description below to the whole January release. So if you want to just see everything that's included. So now with this, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to do, I think I'll do, um, I probably will trim it down and trim the top at an angle. If you've ever watched my videos, that's like my go-to tech or like card design. If I have a background I really want to show, I'll cut the top at an angle and put the sentiment along the angle. So I'll probably finish that and share that on my blog because it's really just cutting and assembling and I wanted to show you this technique and I have one more. The next technique is a little more involved so I'll probably just get started on it but it definitely is is worth looking at. Uh, somebody asked how to store these markers. Let me read the packaging. Uh, featuring opaque and vibrant colors, set of 24 acrylic markers is a must-have for any artist. I'm an artist. Uh, each marker has a medium tip and can be used on a variety of surfaces from paper and cardstock to wood and plastic. Um, so I, I have mine storing on the side and it seemed fine. Somebody asked if these are hard to open. I don't, I think just secure, but my shoulder's fine with it. So I don't know. Everybody's a little different opinion on that. So anyways. So I will finish this card. I will put on my blog, hopefully later today or tomorrow morning, what these completed cards will look like. But again, I'm really focusing on the technique and not so much the completed card. So I really want these backgrounds to show. So two very different looks. This one is the inking on white with that pillowy look. And this one is the bold, bold color on black. Oh, good. Uh, Altenu says the markers are easy to open. Oh, good, good. Okay, yeah, it, Altenew is in the comments, so if you have questions, tag them, and they will be better answered than I will. All right, let me get to my next step here. Hang on. And by the way, this is the zipper bag that you get free with the $79 purchase. So it looks like it's got holes, but it's not. It's really durable, and it, you can hold full sheets of cardstock in here. So I like to use these when I have a bunch of products I want to use together, and I keep them together. But I also use bags like this um, for various things around the house. I mean, for all kinds of things. And they have different color toppers to it. But the free one is the blue. But they're for sale also. Um, great. Yeah. Uh, somebody said that the Altenew prices are uh, for the acrylic markers are very good compared to some others that they've tried. So that's good, that's good to know. Okay. Next. Uh-oh. All right, I have a few things I want to wanted to share with you that you can do with these dies and stencils. So let me show you here. First of all, um, you can use these negative space pieces. So this product, these the stencils and die that I'm using today, that's they're called zero waste, and I should also put a leash on them because they keep running away. This is called zero waste field of flowers. And the idea of zero waste is that you can use the negative space and all the pieces you die cut. So all the paper gets used. So you can, you know, after you've cut out your flowers, you can have these negative pieces here. And you can use these for a background. And I thought I'd just real quickly show you this one. Um, actually, I'll do that at the end. Let me do that at the end. Let me show you the card first. It'll make more sense. Let's see. 
All right, okay. So this one I did off screen. I did it just like the first one we did before. I used the four stencils using various uh, colors of Altenew ink, mostly the new ones. Um, I haven't done, some of the layers I have skipped. I didn't put little centers to the flowers because I'm gonna do those with gems, I think, maybe, or with an acrylic marker, maybe that. But I've mostly done it all here. And I just really like the color on the, um, on the, the color on the colored cardstock. Now this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut this one so you can see all the pieces that you end up with. Now, I had mentioned before that Alton, oh my goodness. You know, whoever's good at these lives, Gina, Kathy, all of you out there that are good at these lives, you never told me how you lose things during them. <laughs> I lose things. Okay, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do, let me think here. I'm gonna put adhesive on the back of this first. Okay, um, adhesive. So I want to make all of these little stickers. So after I die cut, I want them to have the adhesive already in the back. So I'm gonna use an Altenew double-sided adhesive sheet. Uh, the code for the free zipper bag is in the description below. You have to add it to your cart and, oh. I think of some. People had problems. Oh, Altenew said, we removed the product restrictions for the code for this live session. Shop your heart sharp at your heart content and get the free pouch. There you go. Look at that. So I guess you can use, I guess that means you can use anything. Get anything. I love Altenew. Here's a, here's a question. Good people. Good people there. Now I need to find my scissors. Here's a question. Jim. Yes, what's the question? How do new makes different from the old ones? Okay, so here's a new and here's an old. While I'm doing this, so I place this onto the sticky. This is double-sided adhesive sheet from Altenew. Um, okay, so the old inks are the oval ones. That's on my table here. And they came in little color families in general of light, medium, dark, and extra dark. And I used them for years because I love that there are so many color options. There's so many color families. And the... Um, it makes, takes the guesswork out of finding colors that work well together. Now they have the fresh dye ink, which are, are round, which I really like. The ink pad, the lid screws on, and the ink I feel is a little more viscous. It's a little bit different, and I feel like it coats the stamp better when you stamp, and it also you can ink better with blending. So I just find that these seem, I don't know how to, uh, not juicier, but a little bit thicker, more viscous than this. And I have really been liking these. And I believe they're coming out. These will be available in all the colors these were available in, plus some new ones, if that makes any sense. Uh, Richard. Richard said, I just got the Spellbinder scissors you recommended. They are so good. I agree. These shears, they just, they cut like butter. I love them. Okay. So what I've done here is I have a stenciled background, just like the one I did at the beginning, and I put double-sided adhesive sheet on the back. This is from Altenew. Highly recommend this product because what happens is when I die cut, all my die cuts will have adhesive on the back, and then I have little stickers, and I don't have to worry about gluing them, you know, putting liquid adhesive on them or whatever. I am just going to use that adhesive that is already on the back. So you can easily line the die up with the um, inking that you've done by looking through the holes. Somebody asked if this is a die or a hybrid. It is a, it's a dye ink, fresh dye ink. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut this. Now, since this is very thick, sorry if it gets loud. Since this is very thick, it's a piece of heavyweight cardstock and that adhesive on the back of it. I'm gonna run it through twice. I'm using my Empress die cut machine off screen just because I have it in the drawer right here. You may not have to run it through twice. It just depends on your machine. These are the Spellbinders 9 inch shears. They're in the description below. How does it compare to like, Tim Holtz? Um, I also like the Tim Holtz ones. I have those right here too. Those have, um, these have a little bit of a serrated edge whereas these are very smooth. I like both of them. If I got something super thick, I reach for this. Okay, so I've got 
all these little die cuts now. And it's so much fun. Look at this. Look at this. So now all of these have adhesive on the back and look at these cute little inked die cuts. Now I went for a, a tone on tone kind of look here, like not very vibrant. So I'm gonna have all these kind of muted blue and green inked leaves and flowers. And look how many there are. So I can take all of these little die cuts and um, use them to create a wreath, to do a border, to create a bouquet, little accent behind um, some sentiments. If you look at Altenew's website, there's a link for this product below. It's Zero Waste Field and Flowers. There are so many great examples um, of different ways you can use these. So all of these are inked die cuts that have sticky on the back. So I can add them wherever I want because I put that adhesive on the back. All right, real quick question. What about cutting? Oh, question. Does the adhesive from the adhesive sheet get on the die? No, it doesn't. Never had problems with that. Nope. So I've got all of these cut out. Now I'm just going to keep them in there just to keep them kind of tidy. All right. So I got that. Now let's see here. What I've also done, I'm going to do a layering technique here. So this is going to be a fun layering thing. Now you could just take all of these little die cuts and arrange them on a card however you want. But I'm going to step this up because you know that that's what I, I go, I tend to go overboard. So here's one that I inked very quickly. I just did green over one stencil, blue over one stencil, dark green over another, and I'm down to the third one. I just wanted this for the placement, okay? So now I'm going to line up this last one. Actually, I've already done this one in blue, but I'm going to line it up again. I'm going to use that white pen to add a little bit of bright white dots. I uh, may have understood about the free bag being automatic. Okay, so what happens with, if you read the um, information about getting the free bag is in the description below. You need to add it to your cart and then buy, you know, add $79 with a product to your cart and then use the code on the, on the app at the end. All of it's in the description below. So I'm going to do white on some of these. Now keep in mind, if you do not have a white pen like this, oh my goodness, I love this. Um, if you don't have a white pen like this, you could use a white gel pen, or you could always, if you want bright white over stencil, you can do white pigment ink, but the brightest, besides a pen like this, would be to use Versamark over the stencil and add white embossing powder and heat set. So look at that, I did a few white dots. So now some of those, look at that little blue with white on top, just for some fun. Okay, so what I'm doing here is this is going to be my base, my background, and I'm going to glue the other die cuts on top of it. Hi D. What did Shelly ask there? I, I didn't see. Can you tell me my uh, Any tips on lining up the die successfully? Since I have one of the other real waste sets, and after I stamped and ink blended, it, it was hard to get the die placement right. Hmm. I'm wondering if the... I don't, I don't know, because you saw mine lined up perfectly here. Um, I wonder if maybe... I would ask customer service, because I've never had that, that problem. So I would probably ask customer service. Okay? All right. Sorry, I... I don't know, or Alta News here, they can probably tell you too. Okay, so what I did last night while my daughter was learning where all uh, 50 some countries are in Africa, I was gluing die cuts together. So <laughs> I used that zero waste die and I cut it a bunch from the same color of cardstock and I glued them together because I love that stacked look. You do not need to do this step. You could definitely skip this step if you wanted to, but I love that stacked dimension. So let's see. I am going to start gluing these on top. So, all right, here we go. This right here, this guy right here, is my pretty inked die cut. I'm going to glue them on top of some of the stacked die cuts that I did last night. Now, the stacked die cuts I did here, I just glued three or four of the die cuts together. And because I knew 
everybody would be watching and it would make it easier. The bottom die cut in the stacked, I, oh no, I didn't do it. I was gonna put adhesive on the back of that so it was a sticker. Womp womp. Ah, uh, yeah, my brother just called me a doorknob. I should have done that because that would have saved me some effort here, but I'm just gonna put some liquid adhesive on the back of it and then I'm lining it up, dropping it, and then lining it up with the inking that's already in the background. So now some of these flowers will be popped up and look at how that just pops up. So I can go through and do a few more of these. Let's see. And because this has the adhesive on the back, I can quickly add it to those stacked die cuts. Now, if you are looking for an idea for, or a, some tips on how to stack die cuts quickly and easily, I have linked below in my description a video with tips on stacking die cuts. Uh, a few tips that make it faster to do. Uh, Joyous in Christ, hi. Um, the, she asked if the Altenew ink pads are firm or foam pad. They are firm. Uh, they are firm pad, more like a traditional dye ink pad that you know has been around for a very, very long time. But I find the ink in it is more like the ink that you get in a foam pad. Hmm. I don't know, that's just, what I found from my from my uh, experience. Okay, so I all I'm doing is taking these. Let me get all these out of here. All these stacked die cuts that I did yesterday while Lila was learning where Liberia and and uh, Madagascar are. Oops, this is the wrong one. <laughs> and I'm just gluing them on top. Did I put it on the wrong side? No, plus I did. 40, 48. 48. What? 48. What? You said two states plus, or two oh. countries plus 48. Hi, Vicki. All right, Mike, give me some questions. So I'm just putting stacked die cuts on the back of the inked ones that we got here, and I'm going to put them on my background. So we'll have these popped up dimension. This is the kind of card I most like to do. I love when there's like popped, some things popped up and some, some flat. All right, Mike, hit me up. All right. Um... I answered this, but I would put it up again. Uh, where can you get the paperweight? Oh, Bossy the paperweight. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't put it in the description. Bossyjossy.com. So it's B-O-S-S-Y-J-O-S-C-I-E. Bossyjossy.com. She is just a friend of mine who um, does a lot of like engraved gifts and stuff. She also does personalized stamps. And I really wanted a paperweight that crafters could use and she has them in two sizes this size and this this bigger size now the bigger size is acrylic I believe and this is more crystal so this is they're about the same weight but this one is like they're about the same weight even though this one's bigger if that makes any sense I just think they're handy to have but you know if you've got an old book you could use that if you've got, you know, what else? A little girl, a die cut machine, a Misty, you can use anything heavy. But it helps to really make that connection while your adhesive dries. All right, what else, Mike? Next question. What type of paper trimmer, the guillotine, or which? Which do you prefer? Oh, okay, paper trimmers. Paper trimmers are like shoes. Everybody has different needs, wants, they create differently, blah, blah, blah. You have to think about how you create. Now, I did a crafty gift guide video um, last month, last month before I took some time off. And in it, I show the three Tim Holtz trimmers that I like. I really believe he has the best trimmers for crafters out there. I think they're high quality. They're made by Tonic. And all three are different, but offer very um, unique perks. You know, there's, there's unique things about each. I honestly use all three, but there's no need for all three. What I recommend you do is watch that Crafty Gift Guide video and look at the perks of each and decide which of the features are most important for you when you craft. Does that make any sense? Lila, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Do uh, I see Rosie asked, uh, do I ever get nervous about cracking or breaking the glass mat? 
No, um, I believe these, what do you call it? Te tempered, tempered glass. I think they're, I, I assume they're tempered glass so that they won't shatter. Um, it probably, it might has little cut marks on it, but it doesn't, doesn't affect anything I do or whatever. Uh, they hold up really well. I am a big fan of working on glass. I have for many years, I used to get my own tempered glass cut before um, glass mats were available. So see, I'm building up that layer. Christopher's here. Oh, Christopher. So Christopher Allen, who owns Bruce Monroe, everybody nag him because I want to go live with him, but he's a busy boy. So we haven't done so yet. <laughs> there. Thank you, Christopher. All right. Tempered glass. Yeah. Tempered glass is oh, not the right die cut. Uh, tempered glass keeps it from like shattering or whatever. I have in my craft room one, two, five, five of these glass mats because I like them so much. So, all right. Um, and also do know if like you don't get a straight line with a particular die cut or with a particular cut trimmer, do go back and watch videos about them. Like watch one of Tim's videos because he tells a lot about the appropriate way to cut with it, like how to rest your hand or whatever so that you get a really good cut every time. I think they're amazing trimmers. I've used this one the most because it's been out the longest and I use it in videos a lot because it's small enough to show on the screen. But the rotary one, which I have right off to the side of me is what I use when I'm like crafting on my own. Uh, and then there's uh, the newer precision one that I used in my last video. So if you want to learn about that, you can, can check that out. Okay, I'll, let me explain the code thing again. Alt so, so Altenew is in there too, but it's in the description below. If you go and you shop at Altenew um, and put $79 worth of product into your cart from the January release, then add to your cart the uh, zip and stash bag. The link is in the description. Then when you go to checkout, use the discount code. All Altenew, of it's in the description Altenew below. Can answer if they still need the code and need to add it. That's yeah. Altenew, is that still correct? Tell me if I need to change any of that. Tell me if, if any of that has changed. I'm sure that it's confusing because here, here's the thing. You know, I, these wonderful companies, I'll tell them I, we're, that we're going to go live and they you know, want to offer something special to you all. And sometimes we're not sure if it's going to work. You know, what's going to, um, what's going to work. It says, uh, Altenew said, don't forget to add the blue zip bag to your stash into your cart. I mean the zip and stash bag to your cart and then use the co code all to new for free. It's all in the description below. All right. So I can continue to glue all of these die cuts on while I ask some questions or while I answer more questions. Now these little die cuts, notice that it cut these little flowers. I'm not going to do those. I'm just going to leave those flat and that will give me some, oops, that'll give me some dimension, you know, some flat and some dimension. Um, all right, uh, Kimberly asks, what is the restriction that Altenew lifted? Let me ask, let me let Altenew answer that. I, I want to make sure I got it right. And uh, let me, once they, once they answer, I'll, I'll let you know. As for glass mats, uh, the Tim Holtz glass mat is fantastic. It's affordable. There's, I think there's a left version and a right version. It has like a white area on the side, which is nice because you have the black and the white. Um, I use that for many years, but, and that's what I use off screen. Like when I go upstairs and craft, I use my Tim Holtz media mat. They even have a small travel size one. However, in videos, I don't use that anymore because I needed bigger a bigger area than the mat to film for filming purposes. And um, this is this one here is from Glassboard. And I can add a code for that, um, for some savings on the Glassboard uh, once we're done with the live. All right. No more questions. What is the restrictions? Altenew, what is the restriction that you lifted? That's what I, I need to know because I'm clearly not good at multitasking. Oops. I keep messing up. All right, here. Oh, great question. Put that one up from Phoenix. All right. Do the blocks help keep the paper from warping? Okay. It, uh, she finds that her card bases will warp. 
Okay, warping. I'm a big, this goes off the edge here. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of using heavy, heavy, heavy weight cardstock for card bases. And if you don't have heavy weight cardstock, double up because nobody wants a flimsy card where it stands up and it flops down, right? So um, that's one reason I recommend using heavy weight. Another reason is to avoid um, warping. If you use heavy weight cardstock, you will not have warping when you glue things together. Um, you might get warping if you do like an inking technique with water or whatever. In that case, if I get a really warped piece of paper, like maybe after doing a watering watercolor technique, then I will, I'm doubling adhesive here, I will, um, I will run that through my laminator and that flattens out beautifully. Um, it's an easy way to make it uh, flatten. But you know, if you're using a heavyweight card cardstock, I think that one got cut off. If you're using a heavyweight cardstock, you really don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about um, the any kind of warping. But yeah, the heavy putting a block on top will help with warping also, especially if you leave it there for a bit. Like finish your card, leave it under there for a while, then you know you won't have any problems. All right, what am I missing, Mike? Okay, it's okay to store your ink pads on their sides. Okay, ink pads on their sides. I stored my ink pads on their sides for many, many years, and most companies will say it's okay. Um, I think you don't want to do that with oxide inks, I believe. Um, there, there might be some. What If you're concerned, like I had stored my distress, my regular distress inks on the side, I have stored my Altenew on the side, my Hero Arts on the side, never had problems. What I would do is email the manufacturer and ask them, and they'll be able to tell you which. But in most, most cases, yes, you can store them on your side. On, not your side, their side. Okay, so I've got all these glued in place. And see how some of them are set back and some of them are popped up? I loved that look. So this is more a labor of love than, <laughs> love than the others, but it's definitely worth it. Oh, what color cardstock is that? Mm, my guess, you know, I don't know. I just grabbed some scraps. My guess is that is, um, this is probably sea glass from, from um, Altenew, or from Concord Knight. All right, forgive me. I'm looking for those shears that I used a moment ago. Mike, where did they go? This is the problem. This, uh, I put them away. Funny how that works. <laughs> All right, so here I'm going to flip this over. You can see I messed up on the back, but that's okay. This is where you want some heavy duty mo Big Mama scissors. These um, shears will cut these edges like butter because remember, I glued a bunch thick, so this is really, really thick. Okay, so somebody said, who said that? Diane said, Concord and Ninth recommended storing them on their storing them flat. I think that's what it is. I think foam ink pads are best stored on, that's who I was thinking of, um, stored on flat, stored flat, but the firm felt ink pads, the firm ones that most have traditionally were, those are okay on the side. But I did side for years with uh, Distress Ink and Hero Arts Inks, my old craft room, that's how it was. Sea glass, no, sea glass from from Concord and Knight. Uh-oh, I lost my leaf here. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh my. We're gonna have to fake it with another one. See, these are the things I usually edit out of my videos. What All weight, right. What weight do you use for heavy cardstock? Cheryl asked, what weight do I use for heavy cardstock? Well, here's the thing. For colored cardstock, I use Cardstock from manufacturers, stamp companies like Gina K, um, Hero Arts, you know, there's a lot, Simon Says Stamp, there's a lot of those great um, cardstocks from those companies. And those companies have heavy weight. I know they're going to be heavy weight enough, right? Um, because that's, they do card making. That's, that's their jam. I'm going to make this work. It's not going to be perfect, but nobody but you and I will know. Um, 
as far as white cardstock, I use one. Oh, no, that's not the layered part. What did I do? There it is. People. I'm flustered today, Lila. I know. I see what I did. I didn't take the release paper back in. Lila's laughing at me over there. Anyway. Um, oh, Kathy, are you still here? Um, as for white, I use uh, Nina Classic Press Solar White Heavyweight Cardstock in 110 pound. And not all, please keep in mind, not all 110 pound cardstocks are the same because the GSM may vary. So if you go back and look at one of my favorite, oh gosh, I wonder if Brianne's here, she's good at this. One of my old videos from my favorite crafty things about paper from years ago, I go into how you can tell, but you want a high GSM number and a high um, weight. The Nina Classic Press Solar White is high GSM, high um, weight, and it's super thick. It Generally, if you find a cover weight cardstock that is 110 pound, that's a good choice. If it says exact, that's not a good Or indexed, you don't want that because that's more like a thin, flimsy index card that we used to use in school. So I can go through that more in the future. I There's a lot that goes into paper choices. So um, again, if you go to your favorite craft companies, your favorite stamp companies, their card stocks will be high quality. So this is, I, I'm not going to finish it off again because I'm just going to add a sentiment and put it on a white note card. But look at that fun dimension. Now I, I'm not gluing on those little flowers. You could if you really wanted to, but I'm going to leave those set back. And I just think that's such a fun and different look than these. So those are three different looks. And I'm going to show you one more thing just briefly. And then I will finish these off and share them on my blog. Uh, sign up for my newsletter if you haven't, so you can get that in your email. Ah, Not Your Mama's Cardstock from Brutus Monroe is fantastic. I believe that's like 130 pound. It is the heaviest weight white cardstock that I've ever used, and it is incredible. It is incredible. I use that, like if I have a really heavy card front, I will definitely use that. All right. Now, let me show you another thing that you can do. Remember I had all of these, sorry, I'm in the camera here. I'm frazzled today. Flustered, I think is the word. Remember how I had all of these leftovers from cutting all the layers um, from the stacked die cuts? I die cut from this cardstock many times for those stacked die cuts, right? So I have all these negative spaces, but I'm not letting those go to waste. I glued two of them together here, so it's a little bit thicker, and I put double-sided adhesive on the back of one of them before I die cut it, so it's got that adhesive on it. What I thought would be fun is to take this, this is diamond glitter cardstock from Altenu. My favorite glitter cardstock, it's not really white, but it's not silver. This is white cardstock, so you can compare. It's not silver, it's not gold, it's like a really light champagne, and it kind of goes with everything. And it comes in smaller pieces or in full, shy, full size sheets. So I trimmed one down here to be uh, four by five and a quarter. I'm going to put that on the back of this. Let me just cut all this extra off. Here. Save that. Yes, Tim Holtz Heavy Stock is fantastic too. Um, can you use Copic on Nina Classic Crest Solar White? Yep. And you can use it, I believe you can use it on Brutus Nero. I don't do much Copic anymore though, to be honest with you. I, I, I don't color much. Okay, so I have adhesive on the back of this and I'm gonna put it over here and look at this. I can get a fun background. Now with the adhesive sheets, you really wanna press down, press all of these pieces down to really connect and adhere to that glitter paper. So I'll go through and probably press that even better later just with the bone folder and this adhesive will really connect nicely. And it's much faster than putting glue around all of those edges. All right, so now I can flip this over. So this is where the zero waste idea comes into play. I think somebody said, somebody say the Field of Flowers is sold out at Altenew. Oh, you guys are fast. 
if it's sold out, don't worry. They said they'll be getting more in. And I know Simon Says Stamp had some in stock. Now you don't get that free gift, but um, Simon Says Stamp had some in stock and I have those linked below. So you can also check there if you're really wanting to get it. Somebody says there's Simon Says Stamp saturated ink pads to be when they're not stored. Yeah, so somebody said the Simon Says Stamp saturated ink pads leaked when they were stored on their side. That is be that that's Those are foam ink pads. If you have a foam ink pad, I'm so glad somebody mentioned that before. That's it. If you have a foam ink pad, do not store on the side. Um, if you So foam is like where it's really cushy. These all to new are firm, so you can do that. So now look at that fun background. Look at that. And I will probably go through and add little gem. These are little pearls. And I'll just go like to the center of the flowers. Add some of these. Let's get some more out here. I usually do this in a tray, but so now look at that. Isn't that fun? So I'm using that negative space and not letting it go to waste. So that's why it's called zero waste. And they have a few other zero waste. If you just go to the link below and search on zero waste, um, I believe I linked to them all below, but you can find them all in their on their website. So I'll go through and add a little pearl to the center of the flowers. And look at that, isn't that fun? So it's a great way to use that negative space that normally would go to waste. So I have four backgrounds here. Let me lay them all out. And I will finish these all up. I'll keep the card design simple because I really want the focus to be on those backgrounds. Oh, Tasneem is here. Tasneem is one of the um, founders of Altenew. I remember Tasneem and Jen, who are the founders, they emailed me a long time ago. I was friends with them and they said, we're going to start this company. Would you be interested in trying the products? And I knew right away because they're both like true artists. I knew right away that I would love um, love their products. And I remember when they emailed me that first time. Uh, so, okay, let's review here. This is the bag that you can get for free with $79 purchase over at Altenew from their new January release. I guess this stencil and die is now sold out, but the acrylic markers are still there as are the other products I showed at the beginning, all of these little zipper bags and this stamp set is still there too. So um, if you're over there shopping also, they have sales all the time. Like right now they have sales on their double-sided adhesive uh, tape. And I think it's 50% off a bundle. So check that out too. Um, also, I wanted to mention this. This is another type of bag that Altenew just came out with. And I am giddy over this. Look at this. It's like a little bit thinner, but still durable. And the back side is white and the front side's clear. So you can easily see things in it. There's different color tops and it's a little zipper. And look at how that holds that cardstock scraps and stuff in there so nicely. So these are called the Zip and Keep. And these are the Zip and Stash. And they're available in different colors. I have those linked below too. But I'm, in case somebody saw that, I love all these different types of storage options. I'm a big storage fan. All right. Uh, so let's see. Questions. Do we have any more questions? I've gone a long time. Oh, I'm sorry, um, all. I tried to squeeze so much in. Okay, Carrie asked, do any of the other zero waste uh, products have ma matching stencils? I believe, I don't know if they, yeah, there is one called uh, Zero Waste Flowery Pattern. And I did use that in a video. Sorry, I'm off screen here. I'm getting the link for it. Um, I did use that in a previous video. I will add that link to the description when we're done. Um, but it works in the same way. And there's, I just put a link to that other one. Um, but there is one other bundle that has the stencils and I believe it has a stamp set too. Let me look. Yeah, it's a stamp set stencils and die. And it's fantastic. It's fantastic. And I've used that in a video a while ago and it works in the same way, very similar kind of feel, but that one also has a stamp set. So I will add a link to that one. This one was the Field of Flowers. The other one is the Flowery Pattern. They do have zero waste dyes that don't have stencils. This one is one of the older ones, which I've used in videos before. 
um, I don't have the die. I don't know where it is, but it cuts this. So it cuts this background that you can use, right? And all of the little flowers. And I've shown this before. I went overboard with it with all these different colors of cardstock. So I have all of these little flower die cuts that I can layer together and put in the negative space um, and create a bunch of cards. And I've made a few cards, but I still have quite a few left over. And that's from one single die. And I link that one below. That's called, what's that one called, Mike? Zero Waste um, Floral Cover Die. So that's an older one, but that doesn't have a stencil to go with it. All right. Any other questions? Okay, let's do one more question. Uh, Pick one. Okay. Um, who has the best craft of the month club? Oh, it depends on what you like to do. Um, I really like um, that Altenu and Spellbinders have different options available. So if you like stencils, they have a stenciling option. If you like uh, you know, bundles, there's bundle options. I like that there are those options. And I also like that they're products and not like um, uh, products that you would use up, like paper or whatever. It's just the, the products that you can reuse over and over again. Hero Arts always has a great value. Gina K has a great value, but hers aren't monthly. They're just, she has a new one every month, but it's not like a subscription. But there are some other great ones out there. And really, I think you go for, go look at what style products you use the most, what type of products you use the most, and then do the math and figure out the value. Most of them are, are a great value. Um, okay, so some, somebody said, can you go back? Somebody said the restriction was about the restriction lifted. Let me see. Oh, I believe that the restriction alternate removed, you can add anything to your cart, not just the new release. Okay, so $79 of anything, and you can get that gift bag. There's still gift bags in stock. You'll get the gift bag or the zipper bag for free. Just make sure you follow the instructions in the description below. Um, somebody asked about cupping of the magnetic mat. I have never had cupping of my magnetic mat. Um, I mean, you can see these are very well loved plates and there's zero warping. Oh, <laughs> zero warping to them. No warping. So my guess, what I do is when I get new, say these are brand new plates, brand new plates. I do not use the metal shim and I find I don't need it. I don't need it. And I just use the two plates and the magnetic plate. And then once I've used this a lot, it does start to flatten a bit. Then I bring in the shim and I'll use the shim, but I don't use the shim from the beginning. You maybe you did and it gave too much pressure, but I've never had, I've never had any cupping with this. You can see it's perfectly flat and very well loved. All right. All right. So one more comment about the um, ink pads. Let me just show you. Let me just show you real quick so you can see a comparison. So this is, these are two different types of ink pads. This is Concord and Ninth. This is Altenew. They're both great ink pads, great vibrant colors. Um, let me show you. Ooh. Uh, generally, foam ink pads are juicier, so it'll have more ink in it, um, which, depending on how you stamp, is a good thing. It just depends on how you stamp. I like both. I think foam takes a little more getting used to, but once you get used to it, it, it can be delicious. So this, this is a foam pad, and if you look, I'm not going to put my finger in it because I'll be stained. You can see it's got a give to it. See how it's got a give? It's a foam, soft foam pad. Okay, and you can see from the side. Can you see how it gives a little bit? Okay, now this is a firm ink pad. That's what Altenew is. And when you push it, you don't get as much of a give. It's kind of looks like a looks like fabric pressed in with the ink. That's what most dye ink pads had been traditionally. Foam is becoming more popular. So do not store your foam on the side. It's spongy. Don't store that on your side. These you can store on your side. So firm pads, you just think they're strong enough that you can store them on the side. Maybe that's a good way to, to think of it. All right, and if, if something's out of stock, you know, do the notification uh, or check Simon's stamp because they had things in stock too. Sorry I went so long today. 
I knew when I started I was going to have too many projects to share, but you know, I kind of got carried away with it because it could be used in so many ways. And Lila's back to share one more card. You want to share the other card? So I made this one before for one of my friends. Uh, I have sparkle. I haven't added the gems to this one, but this is what I want. Uh, so one friend likes pandas, one friend likes um, unicorns, and these are their colors, and their birthday's on the same day. Mm -hmm. Well done. This one, I'm just going to add some gems like this. She's faster than me. She did that with calm and ease. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm going to make you do a live next time there's a snow day. Yes, I want to. Oh, okay. There we go. You heard it here first. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Again, I'm sorry. It was fast paced. But I really wanted to be able to show you um, how you, know, you can take one product and use it in so many different ways, especially when it's something that's very well designed and thought out. I think this is one of those products. These zero waste products just can be used in so many ways. Again, you can get a free zipper bag, the Zip and Stash uh, bag in the blue color from Altenew. What you need to do is add it to your cart. There's a link below. Add $79 worth of products to your cart. There's a link below. And then when you check out, use the code that is in the description below. And um, that will get you the free gift bag. And thank you to, Al to Altenew for doing that. I really appreciate it. And they always have great deals. So be sure to check it out if you're already shopping. Um, you know, Get your way up to that free shipping so that you can um, check some of the sales out. All right. I think that's it. Oh, Lila was napping when I first started watching your videos. Lila, I've been doing these a while. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you so much for being here. It, I will update the description below with a few of the other things that I talked about. And if you have any questions, please email me through my website. I will be sure to answer those. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Altenew, for the generous gift. And uh, I will see you again. I'll be here next Friday also. And then the Friday after that, on the 31st, Gina will be joining me. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again very soon.